Okay, this is the continuation of uh, questions and answers of Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam and Jabir Ibn Hayyan, part three. And I have my friend Mike here. Hello. And um, Kanizia Fatma here. Hi. So we have to start now. Jabir asked, why is there so much fear of death? Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam replied, there is not so much fear of death as the fear of punishment after death. A true Muslim who has not led a sinful life is not afraid of death. He would respond to the call of his creator willingly and give up his ghost gladly. Then, Ima, uh, then Jabir said, in spite of what you say, everyone uh, seems to be afraid of death. Imam Jafar Sadiq Islam replied, most people do not think or care much about death. It is really fearful and frightening to those who know the time of their death in advance. For example, a murderer who has been condemned by the Qazi and is to be executed on a certain day. Allah is merciful. He has decreed that everyone should die, but it is he who knows the time of death and not the person who is to die. Death is a kind of death, death which all of us must pay back payback, but no one knows when the demand for payment will come. Everyone thinks that it will be made after a long time. That is why we continue to pursue our normal activities day and night without the fear of death. Some people who are totally unconcerned about death become so greedy that they do nothing but acquire and accumulate wealth by whatever means they can, as if they have attained eternal life and shall remain here forever. It is wise planning of Allah that he did not let us know the time of our death. Otherwise, we would always have lived in the state of anxiety and mental agitation. No one would have engaged himself in any useful and profitable pursuit, and the fabric of society would have been destroyed. Then Jabir asked, Why did Allah create man and then make him die and disappear? Imam Jafar Zalik replied, Death is only a change of form. A true and well-informed Muslim would never be afraid of this change. He knows that he would be brought back to life after his death. If a non-Muslim asks me the same question, I will tell him that death is a window through which a man must pass to get a new ways of life. Jabra said, Could you please explain and elucidate this point? Asked Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam, O Jabir, were you alive and fed properly when you were in the womb of your mother? Jabir replied, Yes, I was. Then asked Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam, Were you at the time a small but complete human being? Jabir replied, Yes, I was a full fledged human being when I came out of the womb of my mother. Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam asked, Did you think of death at the time? I do not know, replied Jabir. Asked Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam, Did you have any hopes, fears, desires, or pastimes at that time? Jabir replied, I do not know what the state of my mind was at that time. Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam said, Could you please tell me which was the better place for you to live in at the time, the womb of your mother or the world in which you are today? Jabir replied, I cannot say. I lived in the womb of my mother for a short time only. The Imam remarked, Perhaps the short period of nine months might have seemed ages to you. All people under all circumstances do not measure time with the same yardstick. Sometimes days and weeks pass away quickly, and at another, one hour drags on and seems to have no end. You may not remember anything about your life in the womb of your mother, but at the time, you might have been thinking that the womb was the best, safest, and most comfortable place to live in. You wanted to stay there permanently, but you were brought out against your will. That is why you came out crying. Was it not a kind of death to you? Is not the, this world a better place than the womb of your mother? Jabir said, although I remember nothing about my previous life, I admit that my present life is much better than what it must have been before. Imam Jafar Sadiq Ali Salam replied, It is not an indication that your life in the other world would have been, would be much better than what it is today. Jabir remarked, 
but it is not an assurance that the life in the other world would be better than our present life. Imam Jafar Sadiq said, There is no doubt that those who believe in Allah and carry out His commands would go to a better place. He has made that promise clearly and unequivocally. He is honest, just and truthful and is free from malice and hatred. He would not break his promise and send his good and submissive servants from a better place to a worse one. It is but logical that good and virtuous people should go to better place after their death, if the destiny of a man is gradual perfection. Jabber said, I gather from what you say that we shall definitely know ourselves after our death. Imam Jafri Sadiq replied, it is the faith of every Muslim that he would be brought back to life when Allah wills and would know himself. Islam, more than any other religion, has assured its followers of life after death. The followers of some religions are not so sure as we are. They have hopes and fears like Aristotle, the, the great Greek philosopher. Some of them believe that they would live in the other world in a state of stupor, and would not know themselves and forget everything about this life. Islam has uh, removed all such doubts and misgivings from the mind of Muslims. They have been assured that they would remember all the events of this life and live there as they used to live in this world. They would eat, drink, sleep, and have all other enjoyments of their worldly lives. Continuing his discourse, Imam said, an unbeliever is afraid of death because he does not believe in resurrection or does not believe in it as a Muslim does. Jabba replied, Perhaps he is afraid of death because he thinks he would lose all the pleasures and enjoyments of life. Exactly, said Imam Jafar Sadiq He is afraid he does not know what would happen to him after his death, but a Muslim is not afraid of death. He is sure of a better future and knows that unlimited pleasures and enjoyments await him in the other world. To explain to you and to convince you that a human soul has an independent existence, I would like to ask some questions. My first question is whether, whether you have ever been fainted? Jabber waited for a while and then replied, No, I have never fainted. Imam asked, Do you have dreams? Jabir said, yes, I do, and many times. The imam asked, do you go from place to place in your dreams? Jabir said, yes, I do. And imam again asked, how do you go from place to place when you are sleeping on your bed and are not walking? Jabir said, I think it is my soul which goes from place to place when I am sleeping. Imam said, asked, are you sure that your soul travels when you are sleeping? Jabir said, I am sure. The Imam asked, does your soul, which travels, separate from your body when you are sleeping? Jabba said, yes, it does. And Imam again asked, does the soul eat and drink with your mouth or the soul has no mouth? Jabba said, my mouth does not move while I am sleeping and the soul has no mouth. Imam asked, do you relish and enjoy the taste of food and drink in the dreams? Jabba said, yes, I do. The Imam said, your soul walks without legs, hears without ears, and sees without eyes, and eats and drinks without a mouth. Does it not prove that it is, it is an independent entity and does no, not need a body for existence? Yeah, thank you so much, Mike, for coming, and thank you, Kanisa Fatma.